a todos. Mi nombre. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Álvaro Guzmán de Lázaro, and I'd like to welcome you to our seventh conference. It was only two years ago that we were saying that bad news never came alone. When it rains, it pours. And today, good news are also accumulating. And just a, just a few hours ago, we were given the good news that our, one of our companies, Petrofac, has uh, can once again um, um, bid for contracts in a place of the world. They couldn't do so earlier. And there are also news that uh, their tensions are uh, things are improving uh, between uh, Russia and Ukraine. This is not our seventh conference. It is much more than that. To my right, we have Sergio Fernandez Pacheco, who is a financial and uh, HR manager of Advalor. Mr. Barajes is the founding member of the company, and Fernando Bernat, who is co-investment uh, co-manager. Today, we're going to have a very interesting agenda. We're going to uh, report what has happened the past year. We're going to explain the future we see for our investments. And as usual, we will be answering your questions at the end. We cannot uh, spend so much time uh, with you on the phone, but this is the time to ask anything you need to ask. Uh, we've already received quite a lot of questions in the past two hours, and so we're going to take questions from clients first, and if we have uh, time left, we will take other questions. But if you have a question, send it with your name and uh, identity number so that we can see whether you are a client or not. And uh, as I say, we will be answering our clients' questions first. So. It's uh, six past six. Uh, we hope uh, we the presentation won't last for more than 30 minutes because the most interesting uh, part of the conference uh, is the Q&A. So I'm going to very briefly talk about the results. I think they're good in absolute terms. And against the index, uh, they're also doing well. But they represent the past. And uh, what we're interested in is the future. And uh, Fernando is going to talk about the future. First of all, I'd like to convey a first message regarding the portfolios. Thanks to rotation, we've been able to have a very high potential in our funds, despite the fact that they have performed very well in the past few years. The potential is only slightly lower than what we presented a year ago in our sixth conference, which I think is um, a good achievement and we're very satisfied. And I think this is the most important thing that anyone can say about any fund. The potential it has is not only a good reflection of the yield uh, expectations, but also a protection against uh, risk and disfavorable events that might occur. Value investors always respond to these two questions in the same way. What is the best way to have long-term return? Buying cheap. And what is the best strategy to control risks? Buying cheap. And that is the case. So that is something that good that I wanted to underscore during my presentation. We're going to go over uh, each one of the portfolios. First of all, as Valor International, a year ago, we were saying that the target value that we were calculating were 230 euros per uh, participation. And today, it's 366, which is an increase of 33%, value creation of 33%. We're very satisfied with this. And it's very important to clarify that this is not so much the because we have in, included the valuation of the companies that we have in our portfolio, but uh, the result of rotation. <laughs> we renew the potential of the fund. How do we do this? Uh, we've explained it several times. We've been selling the investments that were going up and that were giving us uh, return. And therefore, its potential was uh, um, being depleted. And we bought new ones with very attractive potential. Our companies that we already had and uh, 
we invested more if we saw that they had good potential. So this is why the potential is practically 100% when last year we said it was 110% and despite despite the increase of in the fund. This target value of 366 is a potential of 100% and another way to express it is with that 18% free cash flow yield which is like the income uh, you would get the rent you would get uh, from a house that you uh, buy uh, where you have to pay the mortgage. So, after paying the mortgage, what uh, what do you have left uh, from the lease or rent? So, this is a very diversified portfolio, more than 50 companies, good businesses, as a return on capital employed. Uh, uh, tells us 22% uh, or more. They are world leading companies in what they do and companies with very sound balance sheets and an owner or management team that is doing things very well. And then Az Valor Blue Chips, our fund of large companies. There we've increased the potential value uh, to. 292, which is an increase of 27% from last year. So the potential is 81%, still very attractive historically for what we've had in the past. It's in the top part of the range. This fund has mostly companies that we find in the international fund, and therefore, to a large extent, it uh, shares the characteristics that we just mentioned about the international fund. At Valor Iberia, here we have not been able to increase the target value as we would have liked. It has grown by 3%. It was 210, it says 209 there in the slide, but the good news is that it still has a potential of almost 100%. It's a fund that is very much concentrated. The top 10 positions of the portfolio is 60% of the value of the portfolio. It's very much concentrated in uh, very good uh, quality companies with an ROC of 34%, companies that we know very well and very good businesses. In brief, this is a fund that, although it has done better than the Spanish stock exchange, it has not given us all the yields that we were expecting, but we are convinced that it will do so in the future. And finally, we did want to forget about global value, the pension fund. It's very important for everyone, um, pensions increasingly more now and uh, the philosophy that best matches with our uh, investment policy is permanent capital it's a very good way to uh, achieve uh, good value is investing in the long term and so it adapts very well to that strategy other years we haven't mentioned it and we wanted to mention it this year it uh, has the main investments that are already in the Iberia and international funds, but it's a smaller fund. And so we might have different ways of some small companies that might give it an advantage whilst the fund is still small. And we calculate a potential I, I don't think that's right. It's more than 100% uh, in line with the other funds, from 553 to 311. It's more than 100%, the potential. And let me hand over to Javier. In the world, there are literally thousands of uh, mutual fund managers, and we know that only a few get extraordinary returns in time. The work we do 
in as valor managers is try to identify managers that have the best quality anywhere in the world and put their investment portfolios in one single fund. So for 20 years, we've been analyzing thousands of managers all over the world looking for certain characteristics in them. They have to be boutique type uh, firms, small companies with uh, extremely stable teams, specialists in a given strategy. And of course, they must be uh, managers, management companies that invest in the vehicles they manage. And so after um, looking for a long time, we have now four, but we're continue to look for others that can improve or complement the ones we already have. Raise every stone to uh, find these small jewels in the world. And we follow very closely those that we already have to make sure that they maintain maximum uh, quality and stability. So we have as valor managers that aggregates the portfolios of these four, which is 110 to 120 different companies. A diversified uh, company by regions and sectors, diversified but with the advantage that each one of the managers is concentrated so that they can carry out a comprehensive analysis on each one of the investments. Another characteristic is that it's a very different portfolio from the index with high exposure to small companies from any place in the world. And based on what happened in 2021, the fund has uh, uh, been operating for three years. It has almost 50 million euros under management. And there has been a certain rotation in the fund's portfolio. There are 20 to 20 companies that have left the fund. Uh, pr companies whose price has gotten very close to its fair value. And uh, other companies have uh, are now in the fund whose uh, share price is very much below its value. We've had takeover bids in eight companies. Eight companies were acquired by somebody else in the market. In some cases, a financial investor Another, in other cases, an industrial investor, an industrial company, a competitor, and at prices which um, entail a revaluation from plus 30 percent in an Australian company that works in theme parks to 270 percent in an American company from the paper industry. We think that these situations are the natural consequence of investing in small companies, unknown companies, with sound businesses whose share price is very much below what they're worth. And lastly, through this portfolio rotation and the good performance of the businesses of these companies, the price is very interesting right now. The price to earnings ratio of the fund is about eight times, whilst the global securities market is more than double. So the fund is listed at more than 50% compared to the global securities market. And with the exception of the first month uh, in 2020, the fund had never been as cheap as it is now which in our opinion gives it a lot of uh, security and uh, allows us to outperform the market in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. I, uh, I'm going to describe how we see the world because we're always asked about this and we always answer the same thing. We have no idea when we have to do economic uh, forecasts well, capital economics says that the world is going to grow at 6.2% in 2021, 3.6% in 2022, and 3.7% in 2023. What we try to do is to buy cheap. This is what protects the investor. At the bottom, we have a timeline with a year since 1997. That's when we were started, started to invest in the market, invest our savings. So. 26 years in the market, and there's been nine episodes of uh, turbulence. Let's go over them. 97, the crisis, the Asia crisis, 
a fall of 22% in a month. When I was in the training room in Germany, I thought it was the end of the world. 98, the ruble crisis. 99, the dot-com bubble. NASDAQ falls 80%. From 22, 1 to 23, Standard & Poor's uh, loses 50% of its value. And 28, 9, it loses another 50%, the S&P with the uh, credit bubble. In 2011, we had a correction of 25%. Uh, Spain was about to be bailed out. In 2017, our fund falls, it starts a fall of almost 50%. In 2020, COVID, another significant fall. And now we have the current situation between Russia and the Ukraine. When you look at it like that, one after the other, uh, the world seems to be, it's going to end, and it never ends after these wars, pandemics. It never ends. And, but we have achieved a reasonably good return throughout these years with one single recipe, which is buying cheap. Why do we show you this now? Because it's important that our investors know that for 25 years we have been managing in all sorts of environments. These past 20 years have been incredible in terms of turbulence. And uh, there you need to um, be calm. You need to trust your portfolio. Uh, it's a business with people. And uh, if it's well done and well analyzed, it will give you a good return. Now, the fund has uh, grown a lot these uh first few months and when it goes up we sell because the safety margin falls if I buy a share at 10 because I think it's worth 20 when it reaches 14 there's much more than 40 percent of risk when the share price increases you need to sell because the risk increases exponentially and that's what we call uh, portfolio rotation uh, what is rotation? Well, a nuclear company that we had in our portfolio, when it goes from 6 to 28 euros, we leave. Uh, we sowed our seeds, uh, it, the plant grew, and uh, harvest time comes. It's a very simple concept to understand, and that is the central idea of today's presentation. Rotation is what allows us to keep a high revaluation potential on the long term. It could happen that we didn't find uh, companies to rotate with. Well, uh, if uh, we will return the money to the client, the um, unit holder doesn't need to worry. And the more volatility, the more profitable this process is for all of us. Now, less profitable for your stomach, maybe. But the more volatility, the more profitable, because, because we think we know how much things are worth. There, if there's movement, that we can arbitrate. And let me hand over to Beltran. Thank you. The gentleman you see on screen, I'm sure you've recognized him. Uh, he's Peter Lynch one of the best managers ever in history, manager of the Fidelity uh, Magellan Fund. And I bring this case here to uh, share this with you. This fund, although it generated 29% annualized return in a 14-year period from 77 to 90, that's multiplied by 60 or more, the initial investment. Many of uh, the investors lost money. That's difficult, being exposed to a fund that multiplies by more than 60, and because of your own decisions, you end up losing money. And very few of its investors obtained a return not even, oh, that was not even half what the fund obtained. Why do I say this? Because at a time of volatility, as we've had in these past four years, many investors had the temptation to give up faced with the situation. But when investing, there is a core responsibility in terms of the return of our investments. Necessarily, we need a team, a management team. And our ambition is for them to get a reasonable return. 
but we also need to understand that we have to make decisions that don't go against us. This is why co-responsibility is 50-50, and that's what I want to express with this slide. We hope, I hope that we can meet in 10 years' time, I hope so, and that we can go over the return that we have obtained. And the one that we have obtained vis-a-vis -vis the fund is better than the one that uh, Peter Lynch's investors have obtained in the Marilyn Fund. <clears throat> if we look at it in practical terms, these data is from an 18-year-old uh, vehicle at Valor Value Selection. And these numbers that I will explain in a minute compare the duration of an investment to the probability of obtaining a given annualized return. Let me try to explain it properly. Each one of the columns, the first column represents all the possible periods of one year where an investor randomly investing during one year would have obtained a certain return. And as you can see, the green part are positive returns, red is negative returns, and you can see how as time goes by and we prolong the duration of the investment to two, three, year, two, three five, until 18 years, the uh, difference between the uh, 50, dispersion between positive and negative uh, pro uh, profitability uh, changes, and then you get until you get to zero negative returns. So the only investment that an investor has to make so as not to have any period of losses and guaranteeing a 100% probability of profit is maintaining its investment for at least nine years, as we can see in the graph. And when we look at the graph, returns fall. But that that's not the case. It looks like it, but it's not. It's the dispersion between maximum and minimum returns, but also the negative returns disappear. And if we look at 12, 13 years keeping your investment, you have an average annualized return of 12, 13%, which is very serious return. In 12 years, 12% 12 is like multiplying your money eight times. This is why the most important decision that we investors have to make and this is a process that I have gone through and I hope that you will do so as well, is not when, it's with whom. If we give the money to some gentleman that we trust and they recycle the money, make the decisions that favor us without us having to make decisions for them, and how long am I willing to invest in that vehicle? And with those two decisions, we will do it better than Peter Lynch's investors and we will reduce to zero the probability of losing money if, store, if history repeats itself. And I wanted to share this image with you. In the past few days, many investors have called us. They're very pleased with the yields obtained in the year 21, 22. We're really very pleased. We, our ambition was to get more, uh, but everyone is focused on return, a return uh, above the indexes. But I always focus my attention on a different concept than maximizing return, and that is the concept of shelter protection. What has been proven in these past uh, 24 months is that the investments that we made at Asvalor have been a protection for the investor. And after protecting the capital, we have generated return. As Warren Buffett would say, in the investment world, there are two principles. The first principle is not to lose money. And the second principle is not to forget principle number one. We hope that the investors that are part of Asvalor are able to keep that in mind and apply the principles that Warren Buffett asks us to think about and that we are able to improve what we already said about Peter Lynch. And now I hand over to Sergio. Um, as every year, I'm going to talk about the aspects that we think are most important in Asvalor activities. Among the responsibilities in my team, there are two that I think are particularly important. One of them is to guarantee 
that the systems, the web uh, subscription processes work properly and are efficient, that uh, the operations of the company are running smoothly. And that has allowed us last year to process more than 10,500 uh, transactions. We have um, 1,300 uh, new investors registered. Uh, Investor Care has received 7,000 calls and all that volume of activity with only one incidence, which was a claim to the customer service department, which is an, a good thermometer of the service quality of this platform. Apart from that uh, work that we do to make sure that things run smoothly, we do something similar to what air controllers do. We have to guarantee that everyone is doing what they need to do. We've mentioned on other occasions that we need to uh, say what we do and do what we say. So we have completed 14 audits, all of them without any safeguards. We have relations with the different institutions that supervise our businesses. The CNMV for activity in Spain, uh, the CSSF, the Data Protection Agency, Bank of Spain, the uh, tax authorities, the, the insurance department for the pensions business. And apart from that, and this has taken us a lot of time and dedication in the past few years, we need to ensure that we change the way we do things uh, based on the changes that we need to make uh, because of the regulations that have been changing very frequently. We have uh, MIFID II, the late, uh, data protection law, and uh, the uh, ESG regulations. Another aspect that we've been working a lot on and investing a lot of our time is trying to automate and industrialize as much as possible all our processes. Last year, 96% of the second transactions of investors was 100% digital with electronic signature. And in March of last year, we made available to you an advantage uh, allowed for f by the new PSD2 directive of electronic payments. If you there's a direct payment now, and the direct payment takes advantage of this directive, and you can connect directly to the uh, investor's uh, bank and do the transfer automatically. So it's done during the same process, and that makes it very efficient and easy to do. And lastly, in, in this operational part, I wanted to talk about how important it is uh, to um, to ma make these uh, periodic uh, contributions. We already have 554 who do so. It's a very appropriate way of uh, investing. It requires discipline, and you go into different. Uh, you go into the market in different moments, uh, so it's very useful. And uh, we have a presence in the social media. Uh, uh, our videos were seen by more than 100,000 uh, people, and we have 1,600 uh, followers in the social media. And uh, the importance of our office in London that was set up in September 2018. London is still a very important financial center in the world. All companies visit London, and having a physical presence in this city allows us to access information that we wouldn't have if we weren't there. And uh, we are increasing uh, the relations between our Madrid and London teams. A lot of analysts spent uh, several weeks in London, and that adds a lot of quality to our analysis. And that's all from me. Of course, I will be available. Uh, and thank you so much for your um, suggestions for improvements. We are very grateful. I'm Maria Fajeros. I'm a nurse, I'm a matron, and I'm a volunteer. I'm going to be working here at Lodonangi Health Center, and now I'm going to DVDV. Please join me. DVDV is a refugee camp 
in northern Uganda. Some 100,000 Sudanese fleeing the war make it the world's largest refugee camp. The conditions are terrible. No access to running water, no access to electricity, no basic sanitation. The situation, of course, is such that the inhabitants are tremendously vulnerable. We deal with minor medical ailments, which would become very complicated otherwise. We have one healthcare worker, we have a driver, we have a staff member, and two interpreters who travel through DBDB, providing service to some 50 persons every day, for the most part children and elderly citizens. The basic needs are malaria, infections, diarrhea, blood pressure, generalized pain, and minor accidents that result from life in the fields. There is follow-up to the patients who arrive, and this project is possible thanks to Asvalor, which has invested tremendous amounts of money as of 2009. We want to continue to reach out. We want to continue to provide services thanks to our medical center on wheels. Thank you to the 7,500 persons who, with your help, survive every year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me begin by saying that after watching this video and after hearing the presentation, I have to say thank you. Thank you to Stick and Pato because we have achieved a successful achievement of our many dreams and which is also going to allow us to truly reach out and do something good for the world. Beltran before was uh, talking about Haven funds and I have to say that this is exactly what Davalor is. Davalor allows us to help so very many persons. This fund is a haven. This helps the neediest, the most vulnerable, allows them, as I say, to have that warm little house we saw in the middle of that snowed up field, a haven. At this point, there is a war raging in Europe. We are witness to a terrible situation. We are witness to the horrors of war. So let me just tell you that each one of us is thinking, what can I do? How can I help the Ukraine? How can I help these Ukrainian families? But let me tell you that at Davalor, we work with refugees ever since very many years ago. So here you see Lilia with her mom, Helen, who left Sudan mutilations, rapes, murders. They fled up to northern Uganda. And there in Bidi Bidi, which we just saw in the video, 300,000 refugees arrived. And there, I have to say, there has been rotation happening. Rotation because we began to initially begin to build houses for the disabled. We launched also a program with thousands of latrines so that hygiene become available. We launched an agriculture, microcredits, to ensure that in socioeconomical terms, these families survived. We established co-ops and our medical care on, on wheels. This little girl, Lilia, had cerebral palsy because of her, her suffering malaria. We have a program which is called the WACA within Africa Directo. You have Spanish doctors, for the most part women, women doctors, they seem to be more solidary, and physiotherapists. So we treat patients such as Lilia. We've seen that it's been six and a half years and we have already raised 2,200,000 euros which has allowed us to achieve our dream, which is exactly what we want to continue to do. We want to do everything we can and more. So let me say thank you. Thank you very much to one of the stakeholders. Last year, a couple of days after our address, reached out to us and said, you know, I'd like to get a project up and running. And we talked about the mobile clinics and he I don't know. I think maybe because uh, 
he the uh, net asset value had grown because he was generous of course and because we are extremely austere we work with religious orders and so on so we committed and at the end medication gasoline seeds for the farming program all of it all of it he said well i can launch two projects not one so he got the farming project up and running thank you thank you very much that is a haven not only because of you know what we said about the refugees those who most need but as as the gospel says a treasure accumulating in 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 heaven nobody will take that from him so thank you let me end now by saying that we have a number of projects underway. There is a lot of rotation in Davalor, as I said before. So we have projects that are educational. We're building classrooms, sanitation, microcredits, clean water, farming, but also solar energy. We have Sister Isabella with us. She's wonderful. I saw her some months back in Tanzania. She's in Madrid as we speak, and they need solar power for an orphanage. So let's do that. Let's do that. Davalor will achieve that. And this is one of the more interesting projects this this year. These little children who are not as lucky as we are, these little orphans will be able to study and will be able to become honest men and women. So we're going to launch programs that provide support to albinos, to persons with different disabilities. So let's see whether we can reach that intrinsic value. Thank you to the team. Thank you to all of the donors at Davalor. Thank you very, very much. No, thank you, Jose Maria. I think it's up to us to say thank you. I, I know that we shouldn't be patting each other on the back, but you ensure that what we do makes a little bit more sense. Because if not, at the end of the day, you know, you make it possible for those who have a lot have even more. But we want, we like that those who have a little bit have a little bit more. So thank you to Davalor. I have to say that that value philosophy, which is yours, Africa Directo, I have to say that the entire company are very grateful for ensuring that we are directly involved. So back to brass tacks. We're going to conclude the conference. It's the first time that we <laughs> are done so very quickly. The conclusions are as always, but let me just bring them to mind. Buy cheap. This is the only secret to making money. For 25 years now, that's what we've been doing. We are the best. We have been investing in all type of uh, settings. We have our war wounds. We have collected accolades, but we've pretty well done it all. So let me just say that, you know, for for those of you, those of you who who are thinking about what we're doing, sometimes it's a little bit scary. But rotation is what truly allows us to guarantee that very high potential in, in our portfolio. Very often, many times, we see many things, of course, because we have uh, we have our, our eyes on the screen at all times and we're talking with the companies in question constantly. So it's important. It's important. Very important to think that uh, when things are booming, this is what we need to do. These are the three pillars. Last year, the year before, those two years, Fernando and I said on a number of occasions, when you have a plummeting, which we did, well, there will be many good years, three, four, five years, and they'll be really good. So I think that that is what waits. But this is the end of the presentation, and now it's up to your good selves. You have interesting contributions. Please let us know your name. Please let us have your Spanish ID number. And now it's time for questions. Thank you.